Welcome to another episode of Tech Talk. Actually, this is the first episode. Um, this is where I talk tech about paramotors while I'm driving to my flying site. So, today's topic. <clears throat> motor on, motor off when landing. It seems to be a big discussion amongst everybody at the flying sites whether you should shut your motor off at 50 feet and glide in or you should leave it on and land. So, I've done both, and my personal preference at this point is always, unless you're a newbie, always land motor on. As soon as your feet hit the ground and you start your, your landing run, kill it. But until your feet are actually kissing the earth and running, leave that motor running. Because you never know when you're going to need to power up and get out of there, which I've had to do. And if I had landed motor off, it would have ended in a crash. Which actually, on my old gear uh, that I used to fly, I always landed motor off. And that ended in more mishaps than I have ever had. So, motor off for new students that are just learning it's more of a safety issue it's whether or not when they land usually they're so nervous that they don't even know where the, the kill switch is at and they don't even realize their motor's still running they'll land and be like e -e 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 -e. it's like dude kill your motor and they're like oh oh and then by that time their wings have been paraplended but once you've attained sufficient skill level hours of flying, takeoff and landings, whatever you want to call it, uh, you should always land with your motor on. And in fact, I found uh, through just trial and error over the years of flying is that landing in a foot drag is actually the best way to go. Don't land like a bird. Don't come in and flare and expect you're going to just like stop all of a sudden. Yeah, maybe if you're on a wing that's too big for you, that'll happen. But, you know, if you're flying a decent sized wing that's fun to fly, that ain't gonna happen. A flare land is not gonna happen. You need to come in, set up your foot drag, and then burn off that speed and kill it. And it looks scary at first, especially if you're flying a smaller wing, but once you, once you get used to it and you realize that the faster you're going, the faster you stop, whereas the slower you're going, the slower you stop. And once you realize that, then you can start nailing the foot drag land without panicking and tripping and falling over yourself, which I did. But um, landing with motor on will give you way more options and it's way more safer as long as you know how to kill your motor. You know where that switch is at, the kill switch works. Uh, and you have nothing to worry about. But if you're a newbie, you need to clear your airspace, and then when you set up your landing, kill the motor. That way you're doing a conscious effort of killing that motor before you land, and you're not going to blend yourself up or your wing, which is generally it's your wing. But um, you got enough experience, and, and you'll know when you get that enough experience because killing your motor will just become second nature. You don't even have to think about it. So, my recommendation until you get maybe 100 or 200 hours, you know, kill your motor before you land, but be sure to clear your airspace because once it's dead, there's no turning back. So if somebody's flying around by you and you kill your motor to land and then they're coming in for a landing also, but you didn't realize that, then there's going to be an issue because your motor's dead and they're landing and you're landing. And uh, it's not going to be pretty. So if you're a newbie, clear your airspace, check your approach, kill your motor and land. You may have to do other things too, but that's generally, your instructor should have already told you how to do that. But, especially at tight little spots like 
we're going to go fly Home Depot tonight. And it's not a very big takeoff and landing, so there's not a lot of space there. So there it's actually super critical that you clear your airspace before you land. So it could be cars in the road or coming across, or sometimes they get curious and they stop in front of you. And that wouldn't be good. So motor on, motor off, it's your personal choice, but it's definitely much safer to land with motor on when you have the experience and just the opposite when you don't. So that's just food for thought. You should pretty much know when you're ready to land with motor on. Um, when you can nail every landing and not even think twice about it, and then I would go ahead and land with motor on. So I'm almost to the uh, to the site, so we'll catch you when we get there, and hopefully this brief little talk helps settle that issue for all you newbies out there that are wondering whether you should land with motor on or off. So anyways, peace out.